Hey friends, welcome to this, woo, <laughs> do you hear that? <laughs> to this full moon video, this full moon in Cancer. Uh, my name is Andrea Blythe and I'm the creator of Let Love Rise. And at Let Love Rise, I create space and events for people to um, get intentional with the life that they're living and to really examine what's working, what's not, what stories and patterns are on replay, what maybe needs to be let go so that we can invite something new and beautiful in. And I do this by tapping into the energies of the moon and music and mindset, of course, and magi. I will talk more about the magi in weeks to come and the cards. Um, but for today, I just wanted to do a quick happy uh, recovery week. <laughs> Let's just say that a lot of energy has been um, bustling around at this time of year, this Christmas season. And um, today I really want to talk about sanctuary, more importantly, our inner sanctuary and how we're doing, how our soul feels at this time of year. Um, about a week ago, I invited some people into my home here. We we're sitting in front of the altar and this fireplace um, and we celebrated the solstice and the decision to celebrate the solstice is because as a storyteller uh, it's something that I have come to recognize is so important in my journey is to really honor where I've been um, the twists the turns the derailments the dark spaces the hard times the hardships the heartbreaks and because it's when we give space for those hard feels that we can get closer to accepting the situation, whether we like it or not, wish it or not, whatever it is that we're experiencing, once we have that acceptance of it, then we can welcome back in the light, which is what the solstice is. So honoring the dark and welcoming the light is just taking what is good from this what did i learn from this what did the universe want to teach me in this story in this narrative in this um, situation in this relationship and um so yeah so that's what i do through my moon circles and through my events for, through the rewrite your story program um, which is going to be launching in january lots of details stay tuned at the end of this i'll give some announcements but um today i just wanted to tell a quick story about sanctuary so first of all, I want to show you this card. I know it's backwards, um, but this is the card that I drew on Christmas Eve. So for those of you that don't know my story, first of all, it's all publicly shared pretty much through my blog writing on Let Love Rise. And um, basically in 2019 through, through 2021, I experienced um, just a spiraling downshift combustion of my life. Um, it's all there and um this year marks my fourth christmas as a divorced woman and um this year on christmas eve i had just a really powerful experience that led me to this card that i want to talk about um and it has to do with rewriting my own christmas story and what it looks like now for me as a single um, woman you know mother of three teenagers um, this sweet dog jasper and um, entrepreneur who just took a leap of faith you know what it all what it all um what it all looks like now or what i want it to look like now so on Christmas Eve, uh, I knew that that was the day that my kids would be going back to their father's house. It was the end of our week together. And so that morning I just carved out just quiet time. The kids and I had discussed the night before we had celebrated the, um, our Christmas together the night before on the 23rd. And we talked about, you know, we're just gonna make a nice breakfast together, put on some Christmas music and enjoy the day. And they'll go to their dad's in the afternoon. And 
blah, blah, blah. So anyhow, <laughs> um, the, the, the morning started with, with coffee and writing as I usually do. And my daughter was the first to wake up and she was like, I think I'm going to get in the hot tub. So I went and I joined her in the hot tub and we just sat and we talked about our word of the year, which by the way, I know this is something I talk about often. Do you have a word of the year? Have you been thinking about kind of an overarching theme to what you want your 2024 to look like when you imagine your best life? In 2024, what 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 words pop up to you? What inspires you? What gets you all excited? Um, I will be sharing mine tomorrow on Facebook Live. Um, but keep thinking about that. But we were talking about that, and my daughter comes up with the word authentic. Okay, my daughter is 16 years old. She'll be 17 in a couple of weeks. Weeks, but she was just saying, I just want to be authentic. I realized that I had been telling this story, this victim story of like, oh, how tragic my life has been and how hard it's been and everything that we've gone through and kind of like I was attention seeking. She's like, and I just wanna, I wanna use that story for like what it is. It made me who I am, but I wanna be more authentic with it. And I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm just floored by this. And then, you know, we somehow decide that we are going to go skiing and meet my ex-husband up there where we will do the kid exchange. I would bring them up, I would ski with them, and he would come and he would ski with them and bring them home. Well, we overlapped and uh, we were able to sit on a chairlift together, which honestly, um, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. We were kind. We sat on the opposite ends of the chairlift, you know, but we sat on the chairlift. We rode rides together. I went in a little bit early uh, with, with my youngest, Rhea, and then Nora and um, Dennis came in. And we all sat together and had this apres ski in this time where we were able to just kind of, for the first time in a long time, just talk about our, our life just a little bit and honor you know the things that we've been through and share and laugh over some experiences and it was really lovely um so when i came home that day that's right that fire is crackling when i came home that day i knew i was coming home to an empty space but what i what i am realizing now is that this space that i'm coming home to is a reflection really of all the work that I've done, all this inner work. And I have been really working on creating this sanctuary um, from, from within, this place where I feel home and I feel safe and I feel comfortable, which is why I am wearing a robe and my glasses today. It's snowy outside here in Boise and I just wanted this feeling of comfort. And so I, I just, spent the evening, I declined an invitation to go to a friend's to have Christmas Eve there and just said, no, I really want to do yoga. I would like to do my divine oracle deck and draw a card. And then I want to watch It's a Wonderful Life, which is my favorite Christmas movie. So I did all of those things. But what astounded me is that I've never drawn this card before. And it's the card of Hestia. So she is the, um, the Roman version, or is she the Greek version? I, I Hestia and Hera, same person, one's Greek, one's Roman. You can let me know in the comments below. It's been a while since I've studied that, but I do, I do love um, this sister of Zeus, the, um, the daughter of Rhea and Cronus. And she is the goddess of sanctuary, the goddess of sanctuary. And her affirmation says, no matter where I am, I am home. The most sacred sanctuary is found within me. And this struck me in a number of ways. First, because of the solstice celebration that I held here, uh, we were talking about our inner light and I held it in this space of my home, um, which is this, this safe haven that I've been building for myself and for my family. And, on that night, it was just such a beautiful moment to see how far our family has come. I had all of my kids here. Um, they participated. They helped me build fire <laughs> in the rain, literally. I mean, and then it snowed. I mean, it was just amazing and beautiful. But 
the most sacred sanctuary is within me and that night part of the ceremony that i led the people through here was this sacred inventory of reflecting on our year 2023 and doing that you know marie condoing our our lives like what what are the things that stay and what are the things that need to go? What do we wanna pack into our suitcase to carry forward with us into our adventures of 2024? And what are the things that we either need to donate or dump and get rid of? So it could be people, it could be jobs, it could be places, it could be work, it could be physical objects, whatever it is. We did this sacred inventory. So for her to talk about this sacred sanctuary being found within when I led this in my home, and I am also um, recognizing that something in my life that I thought was my next step, I was like, this is it, I am going forward and everything is leading me in the direction of this place here in Boise called the Salt Sanctuary. Just one second while I take a sip of tea. Um, I've been doing a lot of events there like this one that I will be doing tomorrow night. It's going to be my last event at the Salt Sanctuary. And I think the place is absolutely beautiful. It is a healing um, environment. You enter into a salt sanctuary and you breathe in and I am going to lead people through tomorrow night um, in honor of the full moon through a moon circle and spirit flow class. But I have decided or I've come to recognize that the salt sanctuary is beautiful and wonderful and healing of a place as it is. It's not in alignment with what I want to create for Let Love Rise. I want to go out. I want to chase the moon. I want to be, um, well, wild and free. And so I am going to be seeking other spaces, including my own space, um, including um, the retreats that are coming in 2024. The first one called Mystical Moon um, that will be at this beautiful place. I, wanted, I was gonna say it, I, okay, I will say it, a sanctuary in, um, in Garden Valley. Um, and then Teotihuacan in the fall of this year. So those are the two, and we're looking for a place for the solstice, the, the summer solstice. So I have three uh, major travel uh, adventure opportunities and collaborations coming up um, in 2024, but I am saying goodbye to the Salt Sanctuary and hello to something new. So again, it's this idea of we have to decide and I was at this pivotal place during this Mercury retrograde of what is right. And, and Mercury is retrograding in the sign of Capricorn. And so Capricorn is all about our, um, like putting structure to the dreams of Sagittarius. And then we move from Sagittarius into Capricorn. That is what the winter solstice is when the sun moves this sign into Capricorn. So it's like taking these dreams that you had in Sagittarius and then putting them into action. And during all this, <clears throat> Mercury still is retrograde in the in this space between the dream and the action. And I just have been doing a lot of reflecting as that is what Mercury retrograde calls us to do is reflect and revisit and review and revise. And um, that's the decision that I have made for me um, and for Let Love Rise. So more to come on that. There are going to be so many cool events coming in 2024, 20, including Let Love Rise workshops. Um, I am looking for a space, but in the meantime, we will be gathering here in my sanctuary. And which leads me to the last thing that I wanted to um, talk about today um, as we are, again, once again, just taking a moment under this full moon in Cancer. Cancer is uh, rules over the fourth house. The moon is very um, at home. The moon is the ruler of the sign of Cancer. So the moon is at home in Cancer. And Cancer rules over our family, our history, our heritage, our lineage. Um, and it is also our physical bodies, the moon and our bodies and how we feel and um, how do we express that. And so, um, yeah, I'm really excited about tomorrow's spirit flow class that was just gonna help us to center into all of those energies. But no matter where um, cancer is in your, in your chart, just be aware that it can bring up some more emotions during a full moon, especially after we're coming off the pace that many people have been moving at during this Christmas season. Um, so there's some of that energy coming in and I wrote a story um, 
Did I write it Christmas morning? Was that yesterday? I think it was. Yesterday morning, because once again, I was alone. I had watched It's a Wonderful Life, and I woke up the next morning by myself with Jasper, Christmas morning. Yeah, and I wrote this story called Rewriting Christmas. And what I didn't mention in Rewriting Christmas, because I talk about how I kind of unsubscribed from Christmas this year, I took, and I think it's been something I've been doing over the years, um, but just like, really as a part of my journey through grief, I have had to let so many things go that I used to do. I've had to put on my oxygen mask. I've had to just out of sheer survival, learn to take care of myself. And that meant in, in those years, like in the really, really dark years of 2020, 2021, 2019, even 2022, my goodness, even last year was very, very challenging. But I had to let things go, like writing Christmas cards. And that's the last sanctuary I wanna talk about. Um, writing Christmas cards or going to um, gift exchanges or even just purchasing gifts for everybody and their you know, grandmother and male man. You know, it's just, it's become, so stressful at this time of year and there's so much packed into this type of year that I think it has overridden in so many ways the intention of the season of that in this dark space to shine our light, you know, to shine lights and to seep into the beauty and the comfort of home and family and friends and loved ones and to love ourselves. My gosh, take a breath, all of that. So rewriting christmas is the um blog post that i wrote and when i talk about not writing christmas cards there are a few of you that know that back in the day um, my mom lived in a place called the sanctuary and the sanctuary was in uh, the lower sierras in a little town called or a little village called miwak village and every year for I don't know how many years, uh, my girlfriends and I would go up to the sanctuary and we would hand make Christmas cards with my mom on this beautiful weekend winter retreat, you know, getting away from the task of motherhood and just like enjoying creating this really, really beautiful intentional space. And people were always like, I cannot believe you hand make your Christmas cards and how can you do that? And who has the time and all of that? And I recognize it, it and I knew it at the time too, that it wasn't about the making of the cards and like, look at this amazing card that I've written, but it was about that space that we created and that time and oh my gosh, the food and the connection and chocolate peppermint martinis, don't get me started. I've written a whole blog post on that alone, but it was just such a beautiful place. And so to go from like parts of my life were so much, you know, so immersed in creating these beautiful cards from a space of love and heart um, and recognizing when everything crumbled in my world that I had to let that go. That was hard for me to do. That was big for me to do. And um, who knows, you know, I, I'm dreaming big this year. And so maybe there will be a Christmas card making retreat somewhere next year mom let's start planning <laughs> um so so yeah hibernation instead rest instead looking at the cycles of nature instead of the hustle and the bustle and the the constant yeses or the unthought of like just or you know just the immediate response instead just taking a beat listening to our inner drum our heartbeat, our first beat, and asking ourselves, is this in my best interest to put my energy towards right now? And if it's not, permission granted to say no. Permission granted to say no. Permission granted to put yourself at the top of your list, to care for yourself, to nurture your soul, to give yourself space to rest, to reset, to rethink, and then to dream about what it is that you want your life to look like in 2024. Every time we turn that calendar year, which in the astrological world happens on the solstice for the rest of 
society, <laughs> I guess it's on the 31st to the 1st, doesn't matter. Within this powerful space of two weeks at the end of this December, we all are given this opportunity to write a new story. So with that, a couple of announcements before I shout, sign off. I am um, launching my Rewrite Your Story program. It's a seven week uh, transformational mindset program. It is all the practices that I have put into place, um, tapping into the moon, into music, big part obviously mindset and then the magic, the magic that happens when we um, step into our stories, examine our beliefs, recognize where do we have limiting beliefs and what belief systems are we ready to let go of and upgrade and change so that we can create the life that we want to live. Um, we all have that power within us. It is the light within us. It is the Hestia, that fire, that flame that burns within us. So again, she says, no matter where I am, I am home. The most sacred sanctuary is found within me. And when we tap into that divine space and we carve out time for ourselves to examine the life that we're living and dream up the life that we want to be living and take the time to close that gap and recognize how we can make that happen. It's pure magic. It's transformational. And I cannot recommend it highly enough. I love my life. And I hope that you love yours too. And if you would like to um, just be more intentional about creating more for yourself, launching that dream that you have for yourself or pivoting or finding the courage or the strength or even just even start with like recognizing what your mind is thinking and how to catch your thoughts. I invite you to join me in Rewrite Your Story. You can uh, find the link uh, below in, um, in the description here for this YouTube video. It's also on letloverise.com. And I believe by the end of the week, all the information will be there and available, all the Q&A, everything about this program will be ready. Retrograde has made it a little bit, uh, has slowed the delivery of this information, but I do also have a join the adventure wait list. If you join the wait list, you are not obligated. You're not saying, yes, I'm in, I wanna participate in this program. You are saying, I would like more information. And you're also saying that I would like to be entered in to win the 30 day Love Your Life Adventure by Mike Dooley. I have one of those that I am going to be gifting out tomorrow on my Facebook Live where I read this blog post I was just talking about rewriting Christmas. So I think that's all that I wanted to chat about today. Happy full moon in Cancer. Um, and I'm just gonna sign off the way I always do, but this time it feels even stronger with Hestia here in my heart space. The light in me honors the light in you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your love, your life and your light. And I look forward to seeing your beautiful space soon. Namaste.